today we are doing part two to my entire fragrance collection. And today's video, we are covering houses that begin with the letters F through K. Uh, spoiler, this is going to be a, a pretty big chunk of Guerlain today because G falls between F and K. Uh, but just like last time, I'll try to tell you a little bit about every single fragrance that I have and not take more than hopefully about half an hour. Last time was a little bit longer. We'll see if we can take that down a bit, but I do have, again, close to 60 fragrances to share with you today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first up is one you saw in the thumbnail. This is from the house of Floraiku. They have very unique bottles, easy to recognize. This one might be their most popular fragrance. It's called One Umbrella for Two. It was created by, is it Eleanor Massinet? Maybe. <laughs> um, Anyway, this one to me, uh, a lot of people say it kind of smells like a blueberry muffin, and I, I sort of get that. I can kind of agree with that. But it's like that with tea. So I think there's like black currant tea. I do think that there's woods in here, but it definitely does have a gourmand vibe to it for sure. Yeah, I really, really like this fragrance. Uh, it's pretty unique to my collection. Um, and that's the only one I have from Flora Coup currently, but I'd like to try more. Next up, we have one from Francesca Bianchi, and of course she is the perfumer because it's her brand. Uh, this is called Sticky Fingers. I love the name, and I also love this fragrance. This one is very patchouli heavy, but um, even though I don't always love patchouli, I really, really enjoyed this one. I think because it's paired, well, she does a lot of orris in her fragrances, which I really love. That's, you know, the, where iris comes from is the orris root. Um, but this one also has like a nice suede leather to it, some tobacco. It's pretty uh, sexy, but I think a lot of her fragrances are kind of sensual or sexy. So this falls in line with that too. I also think there might be Tonka in this one, if I remember correctly, and it kind of smells like that to me as well. Maybe a, the teeniest touch powdery, but that one's just amazing. Uh, so that's Sticky Fingers from Francesca Bianchi. Then we have one from Frasai, another female owned house. Uh, this particular one was uh, composed by Roxanne Kirkpatrick. It's called Tea Sindu, by the way. I don't think I said it. Um, I love wearing Tea Sindu more in the, the wintertime, in the holidays, because it has um, some notes that kind of remind me of that. It has like, I think, nutmeg. There's some sweetness, a little bit of a boozy quality to it. Maybe again, some leather, maybe juniper, I think is in here, but really nice, cozy, um, little bit spicy, little bit sweet fragrance that I find really nice for like fall into the winter. Now, last year I had one Frederick Mall in my collection and this year I still have one, but it's a different one. So the one that I currently own is called Lodiver, or Lodiver, Lodiver is probably how you say it. <laughs> so it's created by Jean-Claude Elena. And this one is just this, oh, it's so beautiful. It's this really light, soft sort of heliotrope iris combo. There's definitely some like sort of white musks in here. I think there's a little bit of Angelica in here as well. I would say if you like Guerlain's um, Après Landy, I think is uh, how you say it, uh, or something similar to that, this is probably one that you'll also like. So that again is called Lo Diver. Next up, I have three from the house of Gallagher Fragrances and they are all created by Daniel Gallagher. First one up is Behold Patchouli. It's another patchouli fragrance, obviously. This one is sort of a gourmand patchouli. It's like a chocolatey patchouli. There's orange. Um, I think there's a little bit of honey in this one as well, um, and maybe some amber. Yeah, honeyed amber, musk, patchouli, chocolate, frankincense, and orange, citruses. So that one is delicious. Really, really like it. Uh, the other, well, I have two more. The next one I have is Rosé All Day. I did a video on Gallagher fragrances recently, so I can link that and you can learn a little bit more. But Rosé All Day, um, it kind of smells like apple crisp with the brown sugar and stuff, but it does have the stainless steel note that kind of turns off some people, but I, I find it really unique and interesting. And I love it. I just think this is great. Another great fall scent here. And then the third one, the last one that I have from Gallagher Fragrances is called Wicked Good. And this one is like a chocolate tonka vanilla thing. But I get, after the opening, I get a lot of vanilla. In the opening though, there's a lot of the chocolate there too. So anyway, that one is Wicked Good. It's delicious. Um, probably my favorite from the house and then Rosé All Day and then Behold Patchouli, but uh, they're close. Next, I have one from the Giorgio Armani Privé collection. This is called Vetiver Diver. This was created by Alberto Marias, and it is a vetiver fragrance for sure. It's kind of like this light, 
citrusy vetiver. I really enjoy wearing this in the spring and summer. It doesn't last a super long time, but it is just so beautiful and refreshing. Um, and I don't, I just love it. I just love wearing this in the spring and summer. So that one is vetiver de Ver. definitely a light fragrance, but, um, I think it's just beautiful and you know, I love vetiver. So here's another example of that. It's not too heavy though. So like if you think vetiver is too masculine for you, I still encourage you to sample this because I think the citrus is brightening it up a lot. Next is my only fragrance from Givenchy. This was created by Anne Flippo, uh, Dominique Ropion, and Fanny Ball, I think. This is the L'Entredi Eau de Toilette. And I've actually owned this before, uh, quite some time ago, and I recently reacquired it. So this is definitely a tuberose forward fragrance. It does have, I think, a little bit of orange blossom, some patchouli, maybe some vetiver and musk in here as well. But this is a really beautiful, uh, not too heavy or cloying tuberose fragrance. A little bit creamy, but not too much. It's a little lighter than a lot of them, uh, but it still lasts fairly well. So that's Linter de Eau de Toilette. Next up is my only one from Goldfield and Banks, and this is a fingerprint magnet, so just excuse that, but this is called Silky Woods. I talked about it recently in a video I did on some new releases. I really love this fragrance. It has vanilla, it has, um, I think, a bit of tobacco, some saffron, I think, but there's a bit of oud in here as well. It's it's present, but it's not anything like really stinky or you know, barnyard or anything like that. Um, and then I think that there's a bit of suede and sandalwood in here as well. So it has this like nice balance of not too sweet, not too animalic, just really well blended um, combination there. If you do like vanilla fragrances, you should check out Silky Woods. And here's another vanilla fragrance from a different house. So this is from Goutal Paris. And I believe this one is credited to Camille Goutal and Matthew Nardin. And this one here is definitely a vanilla forward fragrance. A lot of people say this is kind of dupish for Guerlain Spiritus du Blavigny. They are similar. They're not identical, but they are similar. My big complaint is that this thing like comes off every time I take the cap off, which is annoying. Um, but otherwise, the scent itself is really, really pleasant. This one does have a lot of overlapping notes with Spiritus du Blavigny. Like I think not only does it have the vanilla, but also some incense, maybe some pepperiness to it as well. But um, I think that the, well, I'll talk about it in a bit. Anyway, um, it's kind of similar, but just a little bit different. So they're not identical, still a great fragrance though. And again, another good one for vanilla lovers. And if I didn't say the name, it's called Nuit et Confidences is sort of how you say it. <laughs> The next three are all from the house of Gucci and they were all created by Alberto Marias. The first one up is called A Song for the Rose. And this bottle is just, it's my favorite bottle of any of the Gucci fragrances from this particular Alchemist Garden line. This one is like a woody rose with some musk. This line I would say is not like anything overly complicated. I think that in general, the scents, at least the ones I've tried, are more on the simple side, but they're really well done. Like this is absolutely beautiful. Such a realistic rose. I really like the touch of uh, the musk in here. It's not like dirty or anything. Um, but yeah, that's just, it's gotta be one of the best rose fragrances that I own. So that's called A Song for the Rose. Then this one's really unique. This is called Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme. And so this one does have rose in it as well, but this one has sort of like this blackberry fruity note in it with some woods and patchouli as well. Um, I definitely think that uh, this, even though it says pour femme, could be worn by a man. And oh, I, I really dig that sort of berry rose woody combo in this. Uh, so that's absolute pour femme or Gucci Guilty absolute pour femme. And then the last Gucci fragrance that I have is this one here, Tears of Iris. Again, the bottle's stunning, and I just adore this fragrance as well. So this one has Iris, Angelica, Sandalwood, and Musk, and oh, it's so nice. This is sort of a, it's sort of a powdery, but also kind of creamy Iris in here. A little bit makeup y, perhaps, I would say, but it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, lasts okay on me, but not fantastic. I adore this scent though. So that one's called Tears of Iris. 
Okay, here we go. It's time for the massive Guerlain section. And first up, we have Angelique Noir. My bottle is getting pretty low. Oh, here we go. Let me turn it the right way around. <laughs> um, so these all look the same, but the plates are different. These are actually getting repackaged. I think some people believe that they're discontinued. And I've seen people like upping the prices on these a lot on like eBay and Mercari. Please don't pay those prices. I don't know that they're getting reformulated or not. Sometimes things get repackaged and they don't get reformulated. Sometimes they do. And actually just recently I saw these are still on sacks in this packaging if you wanted it. So um, anyway, Angelique Noir, beautiful Angelica vanilla fragrance. I do think that there's a bit of woods and pink pepper in here, but uh, this creation by Daniela Andre is fantastic. It's beautiful. Um, this is my second bottle and I'll probably pick up another one, but I don't need it just yet. So I might wait until the new ones come out. I don't know, we'll see. Next I have two Aqua Allegorias. The first one up is Limon Verde. So Limon Verde was created by Terry Vasser and this one is like this sort of lime uh, rum. It's not rum, it's like cachaça sort of combination there. Makes it smell a little bit like a Caprinha. Uh, really nice, refreshing for summer. And then the other Aqua Allegoria one that I have is my favorite of the two, although I really like both. This one is Mandarin Basilic. Um, Mandarin Basilic was created by Marie Salomain, and this is just this delicious, juicy mandarin orange. That's mostly what you get here. There is basil. I think there might be some orange blossom in here too, some other stuff, but mostly it's the delicious mandarin orange with a little bit of basil. So that's Mandarin Basilic. The next one is the newest to my collection, and I do think this one, I think this line, in fact, might be discontinued, um, at least in the United States. A lot of times you can still get stuff at the French, uh, like the main Guerlain boutique that you can't get anywhere else, but I do think this might be discontinued in the United States. This one is called, and I don't even know how you say it, Baiser de Russie, <laughs> B-A-I-S-E-R. And this one I got to try because a really kind woman sent me a little bit of her bottle so I could try it. And I loved it immediately. Called up the Guerlain Boutique and they had two bottles left, so I bought one. This is a beautiful pine, uh, sort of sweet. I think there's like a, a sort of a caramelly vibe to it, a little bit of fruitiness to it. I think it also has an absinthe note in it, but I definitely get like the sweet pine fruitiness, like a berry sort of fruit in here too. Oh, this is just fantastic. And I'm so grateful that I got to try this before it was completely gone and that I was able to get a bottle before it was completely gone. Now, again, I don't know for sure that this is discontinued. Maybe this line is just getting repackaged, but so far we haven't seen photos of this line in new packaging, whereas we have seen photos of the art and materials collection. Um, so the future of this particular scent is unknown, but uh, for now, I'm just kind of thinking it might be gone, but they, they bring back stuff sometimes, so maybe it'll come back. If I didn't say that last one was created by Terry Vassar and this one, Queer Beluga, was created by Olivia Polch. And I'm gonna go a little faster through these because I think I'm going too slow. So Queer Beluga is their sort of leather one in the collection, but it smells like this really soft, supple brown, like light brown or tannish kind of suede with a beautiful vanilla, like the same sort of vanilla that's in some of these other ones. I adore this, one of my favorite leather slash uh, sort of suede type scents that are out there. Then I have this one that I know everybody's freaking out about lately. This is Gourmand Coquine. Again, inconclusive as to whether or not this particular line, the uh, Charnel collection, whether or not that is completely gone or just being repackaged. But um, I still have close to half a bottle and I'm not willing to pay the absurd prices that people are selling these for now. So I'm either just not going to have it after this one is gone or potentially it'll get repackaged and I'll just buy it at the normal price in new packaging. So we'll see. But anyway, Gourmand Coquine is fantastic. It's like this beautiful chocolatey fragrance, but um, it has a booziness to it. It sort of smells like the inside of a chocolate covered cherry, like that boozy liqueur sort of filling that would be in there. I love it, it's so good. This is my favorite chocolate fragrance, um, but there are some other really good ones I have in my collection as well. Anyway, that's Gourmand Coquine. Um, and yeah, it might be discontinued, we're not sure. By the way, Gourmand Coquine was created by uh, Christine uh, Nagel, or Nagel, I never know how you say her name, and Sylvain Delacorte. And then we have uh, another newer one to my collection. This is Iris Toreffi. And this one is supposed to, well, it means like roasted iris, I think. It's supposed to be like this coffee and iris combination. I think it also has a little bit of spice in here, maybe some ambrette, maybe a touch of leather as well. But I would say 
This is a really light fragrance, um, still really beautiful though, and I do like it. I was kind of worried because some people didn't seem to be too thrilled by it. I think it's mostly because it is so light, but the actual scent itself is really beautiful. And in general, this collection as a whole is kind of on the lighter side. This one is maybe even lighter than some of the others, but uh, the collection as a whole is on the lighter side, but like just insanely beautiful. Keep forgetting the perfumers. Iris Trophy was created by Delphine Jelk. And next up we have, this bottle looks terrible, but when it has the puff in it, it looks beautiful. However, it evaporates. So we're just going with the terrible looking version of it. This one is called Le Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie. And I think it means the most beautiful day of my life. This was created by Terry Vosser and I'm not gonna take the cap off because I have it parafilmed so it doesn't evaporate. But this is this sort of beautiful like Jordan Almond kind of fragrance. Like it, almond is probably one of the main notes to my nose, but it is like, this candy Jordan almond. There's definitely like a bit of vanilla, orange blossom, angelica, that kind of thing going on in here. It's really beautiful. And I think that they've done a good job sort of creating a wedding scent because it does smell like something that would be absolutely stunning to wear on uh, someone's wedding day. But also it's just beautiful to wear whenever you feel like it. Another Terry Vassar creation and another one featuring the note of almond. This is Lome Ideal Cologne. This is marketed towards men, but uh, women definitely check out this line in general. They do kind of smell, some of them smell quite a bit different, but they have some similarities also. My favorite is the cologne version, but I also um, like the original as well. Um, I think there, there are a couple that I really like from this collection. So this one has a lot of citrus. It has like grapefruit, orange, but then there is also that almond in there. And I do think there's maybe a bit of vetiver and white musk in this as well. It's really refreshing though, great for summer. This is discontinued as well, unfortunately, but you can still find this one for a fairly decent price. Next we have Louis, which is uh, Delphine Joke and Terry Vosser. And this one is just absolutely stunning. So Louis has this combination of carnation leather and like a vanillic benzo anything that I find really, really alluring. Um, I do think that this is supposed to smell kind of similar to the Bois de Harmony. If you have that, I don't currently have that. Fingers crossed I will have that soon. Um, but uh, if you've smelled that one, apparently it's supposed to be kind of similar. But I think this one maybe leans slightly more masculine is what people say. Um, either way, I personally love to wear this and I think it's completely unisex. So that one is Louis. Next, we have one that is also very much discontinued and pretty hard to find. This is Mon Exclusif. This was the precursor to Mon Guerlain, so it does have that beautiful lavender note in there. Um, but with this one, you have this sort of uh, toffee sort of note in here with some vanilla. It's really delicious. I love this. I really like Mon Guerlain as well and that whole collection, but I like this even more, so I don't own the other Mon Guerlain fragrances anymore. I just have this Mon exclusive. And this one was again created by Terry Vosser. Next up is a Francis Kirkjohn creation for Guerlain. This is called Rose Barbar. And this one is like this uh, rose aldehyde sort of combination. I think there's a bit of peach, maybe some honey in here as well, but this is just a really beautiful rose fragrance as well. Uh, I would say it's kind of more on the classy or more formal side in my opinion, but you know, wear it when you want. All right, now we're gonna go to a little bit more of a classic fragrance from Guerlain. This is not one of their oldest ones, but definitely one that I think is considered a classic at this point. This is Samsara. And my mom used to wear this. I have this EDT version that's uh, from the, before the reformulation. I don't know exactly when I would date it sometime late 90s, early 2000s, maybe up to like mid 2000s, like that era. Um, but, uh, it was reformulated again since then. And I'm sure it was definitely reformulated before that too, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, this is kind of, you know, in the middle. So this one is just this, um, it's it's got a lot of florals in it, like Ylang Ylang, but it also has this really nice sandalwood in it that is why I think I like it so much. I think it does have a little bit of vanilla and tonka in here as well, but mostly to me, I get the Ylang Ylang and the sandalwood. Um, this one was created by Jean-Paul Guerlain. And like I said, it's, been around for a while, so you've probably smelled it before, but if you haven't, definitely check it out. Then we have this flanker to Shalimar. This is Shalimar Cologne. Shalimar Cologne was created by Terry Vosser, and this one is a very lemony take on Shalimar. To me, it smells like a lemon cookie. Oh, it's so nice. 
maybe like a le some sort of lemon dessert essentially is what it smells like. So you have like the lemon, the vanilla, you can tell that it's related to Shalimar, but it doesn't really have any of the animalic qualities to it at all. Um, this is really easy to wear and I think particularly nice in spring and summer, but that is called Shalimar Cologne. Note, it is not the Eau de Cologne. Eau de Cologne comes in a different looking bottle. This is just called Shalimar Cologne. That's the name of the fragrance. I don't think they make it anymore, but I do think you can still find it every once in a while. And last but not least, we have another Jean-Paul Guerlain creation. This is my favorite, Spiritus Double Vanille. Uh, again, this is not discontinued, it's just being repackaged. Uh, so you do not need to spend extra money to buy it right now. Please don't do that. Um, this is just a fantastic vanilla fragrance. It's vanilla, there's incense, there's a booziness to it. I think there's, again, pepper in here, pink pepper maybe. Touch of rose, I think, as well. But man, this is just so cozy. Um, and it's my... Uh, I'll do a vanilla video and let you know if it's my favorite or not. But I would say it's top three for sure. Uh, and it's just, in general, I have an attachment to this fragrance. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Next up is Anna Marie. This was created by Bertrand Elena. It's been around for a really long time. This is just the original Anna Marie. I have the Parfum concentration, but I also love the EDP. And this one is sort of like this fruity, like berry sandalwood combination. Has a bit of black currant in here. I think there's some ylang ylang as well, but uh, I really love this combination with like the sweet berries, but the creamy sandalwood. Um, I think that's a nice contrast with a little bit of florals and yeah, just love it. So that's Anna Marie. Then we have one from Hermes. This is called Ombre Narguile. And this one was created by Jean-Claude Elena. This is amber, honey, tobacco. I'm sure there's vanilla in here too. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. So this smells a lot like Angel Share. I'm gonna do a comparison of them soon. Um, but uh, if you like that, or there's a few other fragrances that this reminds me of, uh, then you'll definitely like this one. This one came first, of course. So uh, it's, it's just fantastic. So again, Ombre Narguile. Next, we have one from the House of Oud. This is called Dates Delight, and it was created by Andrea Thero Casotti, maybe? Is that how you say her name? Uh, so this one, of course, focuses on dates, so it's a gourmand fragrance. So it has this like dried date sort of feel to it, but then there's like honey, tonka, maybe some different spices like cinnamon, stuff like that. It's really delicious. Um, so that's from the House of Oud. It's called Dates Delight. Now I have two from the House of Sillage remaining in my collection. The first one is called Haute Bijou. And this one smells a lot like Meliora from Parfum de Marly. Um, so this has like, I think, grapefruit, mango, maybe some heliotrope in here, but I, the fruit is kind of the most prominent player here. And like I said, it does smell a lot like Meliora if you've ever smelled that. I also have this one here, which is called Wonder Woman 84. This is my favorite one that I've tried from the House of Sillage. And this one has like vanilla, orris, there's Tulu balsam, uh, Davana in here. It's just sort of like a slightly, slightly smoky, mostly more like sweet kind of, uh, I don't know, like an almondy marshmallow sort of smell to it in a way. I'm not sure who created this one, but I do believe that Mark Buxton created um, the Haute Bijou. Next, I have two from Memoirs of a Trespasser, and luckily they give me a little cheat sheet of notes here that I can tell you. Um, so these are both created by Josh Meyer, who is uh, the owner and perfumer for Imaginary Authors. And the first one up is called Memoirs of a Trespasser. This says it has vanilla, gaiac wood, myrrh, bergamot, benzoin, ambret, and oak barrels. Um, so they all have an imaginary note. In this case, it's the oak barrels. Yeah, this is just this really nice sort of woody vanillic fragrance. Love that one. And then I, I also love this one. Like these are my two favorites, I think, from the house. Um, and St. Julep I really love. But I have others, but they're only in travel spray. So I have other uh, fragrances from imaginary authors, but they're in the like little, I don't remember how many mils. It might, it's bigger than 10. But anyway, I have those. Um, so the other one I have here in a full bottle size is called Telegramma. And this one has talc, lavender, black pepper, teak, amorous, vanilla powder, and fresh linens. Um, this one I think sometimes people perceive as being a little bit more masculine, but I think because it does have that powdery vibe, I find it to be very unisex. This does smell like something really soft, powdery, clean, um, you do get a little bit of that lavender in there as well, but um, I would say the teak wood stands out a bit to me too. So that one is called Telegramma. 
These next two I'm just going to do together because they're very similar. So I have two from Jean-Paul Gaultier. They are La Belle, which you can see doesn't have a lot left, <laughs> and uh, La Belle, Les Parfums Intense. These were both created by Quentin Biche and Sonia Constant, love them both. And these uh, both feature a note of pear with vanilla, but then I think originally this said it had vetiver in it, but like there's tons of other things I'm sure. Um, I don't know why I took this off, I can still smell it. Uh, they're so good, they're so good. Um, and then this one added Tonka instead um, to the base. And I actually think I might prefer the Intense a little bit, a little bit, but I love them both. And if you haven't tried them, check them out, uh, get samples. But if you like, I mean, they're sweet, they're sweet, but if you like the idea of like uh, sort of a uh, pear vanilla combo, then I think you'd probably like both of them. So that is La Belle Le Parfum and uh, just the original La Belle. I'm gonna butcher this next perfumer's name. I think it's Vanina Maracciole, <laughs> but she created this one for Jeroboam. It's called Insolo. And this is another really nice vanilla fragrance. This one's vanilla, jasmine, and musk. It's mostly the vanilla and the musk, I would say, but um, I, as a whole, I don't really care for this house, but this one particular fragrance I do quite enjoy. It's like sort of red, by the way, just FYI. Don't spray this on light clothing because it is actually very dark colored. Um, so that one is called Insulo. Then we have this cheapie still going strong in my collection. This is Jessica Simpson's Fancy. This was created by Alexis Dadier. And this is like a caramel, vanilla, almond, and pear kind of combination here. Really sweet, but just like kind of a guilty pleasure almost. It's actually quite good. Like this has got to be one of the better uh, celebrity fragrances I've personally smelled, at least to my taste. Um, and I like to wear this one to bed still. All right, now we're gonna hit another long stretch here. The next long stretch will all be featuring Joe Malone fragrances. So buckle up and sit tight. The first one up is in new packaging, but it's an, you know, a fragrance that's been out for a while. This is called Blackberry and Bay. It was created by Fabrice Pellegrin. And uh, this of course is Blackberry and Bay, but I think there's also like a bit of citrus and vetiver in here as well. Um, I would say that to me, this is very, very unisex because of the bay and kind of the woodiness that I pick up in here. I really like it though. I like it a lot. So that one is Blackberry and Bay. It's the same as it is in the normal bottle. So it doesn't matter which packaging you get it in, it smells the same. Then we have one from Andrea Lupo. This is called Dark Amber and Ginger Lily. This is, you know, in their intense version. And so this is ginger, sandalwood, I think cardamom, maybe like some florals in here. And there's something spicy to me as well, but I really enjoy this. Um, I would say this is, it, it does better than uh, a lot of the regular colognes in their collection, but it's still a little bit on the lighter side maybe compared to some others from this particular like intense collection. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, then we have another one in these cute little bottles here. This is called Elderflower Cordial. And this is, I think, a re-release of one they had called like Elderflower and Gooseberry or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was called. But um, this one, was created by Christine Nagel, or Nagel. God, I, I need to figure out how to say her name. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me know if you know how to say it. Is it Nagel, Nagel, Nagel? It's Nagel, it's Nagel. I've heard somebody say that before. Christine Nagel. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this one obviously has this um, elderflower note in it, but it does have gooseberry because like I said, it's a re-release named differently. Um, and there's like a little bit of a dried fruit vibe. It definitely smells liquor -y and that it's like not really um, boozy so much as it is syrupy in a way, if that makes sense. So um, that one's really nice, but it is a little bit more on the sweet side. Then we have, oh, this one's discontinued completely, I think. This is called Ginger Biscuit. I really like this one. There's barely any left in there. Again, Christine Nagel. <laughs> and this is, I think, Ginger, Tonka, Smells like, again, there's probably some spices in here, vanilla, something nutty. It's delicious. This is so good. I hope that they come back out with this. They tend to do that like every so often they'll come back out. So hopefully they will and then I can get more because not a whole lot left in there. <laughs> so anyway, that's Ginger Biscuit. Uh, now I have one from the Rare Teas collection. This one is called Midnight Black Tea. And this was created by Serge... Majulier? <laughs> Probably not. 
So this one of course has a T note, but also it has a tobacco note in here, which is why I was really interested in this one. And the cap is magnetic, like that's unusual for Jo Malone. Um, but it has like, like I said, the tea, the tobacco. I think there's a little bit of a cacao vibe to this as well. And then maybe some tonka, cause it does seem to have like a little bit of a powdery vibe. But I think if you like a lot of the gourmands that I like, this might be a good tea fragrance for you because some of those gourmand qualities and the tobacco qualities in this come out maybe more than the tea does. So it's still, tea-based fragrance, but you know, has some other things going on. Um, then we have Myrrh and Tonka from the Intense Collection. This was created by Matilda Bijou. And this is like Myrrh, Tonka, obviously, duh. Um, I think there's a bit of lavender, vanilla, and maybe some almond in here. This one is strong. This is one of the few from Jo Malone that will last all day and project on me. Um, but I love it, especially in the winter. Like I don't really reach for this one in the summertime, but in the winter, this is a really cozy fragrance. The other one that I have from the Rare Teas collection was also created by that Serge Majulier. So this one's called Oolong Tea. And this one, again, of course, uh, has a tea note. And this one, I do think the tea stands out more. Like it does smell even more like a tea fragrance than the other one. And this one also has like woody notes, I think sort of like an amber accord and some vanilla in here. Um, so again, this is more of a tea fragrance to my nose than the other, but I still really like it, uh, possibly because it does have the amber and the vanilla in there and whatnot. Uh, so that one again is called Oolong Tea. Next up is one of the newer additions to Jo Malone's line. It's called Scarlet Poppy. This was created by Matilda Bijou again. And of course it has poppy in it, but this one also has like a bit of tonka. I think it smells like heliotrope, sort of gives it like an almondy vibe to it as well. And then I think there's ambrette in here for sure. It really smells like ambrette to me, which I love that note. Um, so that one is Scarlet Poppy. It's pretty light, but really enjoyable. Then we have Tangy Rhubarb, another one in those cute little bottles. Tangy Rhubarb was created by Nicholas Bonneville and it's rhubarb and orange mostly. Um, but I do think there's a little bit of sage and like a, a woodiness to it as well. And last but not least, of course, is my favorite still um, from Jo Malone. And this is wood, sage, and sea salt. This is what my car smells like. I have one of those bougie uh, Jo Malone air fresheners in my car and I refill it constantly with wood, sage, and sea salt. Well, not kind of, I mean, it lasts a few months, but I just always use wood, sage, and sea salt in there. Um, so anyway, this is my favorite third bottle, I think, of wood, sage, and sea salt. I love it. I just love it. I don't care how popular it is. I love it. This is like uh, wood, sage, musk. I think there's ambrette in this one as well. There's definitely some citrus, obviously the salty notes. Um, I love it so much. If you like like an idea of a salty, woody, refreshing, citrusy, sort of citrusy kind of fragrance, then um, you might want to check this out. If you haven't smelled already, Maybe you probably have. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's wood, sage, and sea salt. All right, we're finally to the K's. And first up, we have one from Kaoli. This is Vanilla 28, probably the most popular one, I would guess, from the collection. But um, this is, you know, a, a vanilla fragrance. It has vanilla orchid, I think, is what's credited in here. And then, like, brown sugar, tonka, some other stuff. It is really nice. It is, like, a little bit sweet but not too sweet. It's like a darker style of vanilla, a little touch of florals in there. Um, and yeah, I just really like it. I think there might be a touch of musk in this as well. But anyway, um, this one was created by Gabriella Chalario. No. Next is one from Kerosene. This is my favorite coffee fragrance. And all of Kerosene is uh, created by John Pig. He used to be a YouTuber and then he just like switched to do this full time. Um, so he's a perfumer owner of Kerosene and Follow is just this delicious coffee and uh, maple syrup kind of combo primarily is what you get from this. Love, love, love this. It smells so good. Um, so if you like coffee fragrances, definitely check out Follow. Next, we have one from Kiehl's. This has been around a long time, although of course I have a newer bottle. This is called Original Musk and it smells like a musk fragrance. There are some florals in here as well and maybe a touch of patchouli, but mostly it's about the musk. I really enjoyed this fragrance. I think it's quite nice. Um, and I'm really into musk. So, uh, you know, if you're not, you might not like it, but if you are, and you haven't tried this, it's maybe 40 or $45 uh, Ulta or Kiehl's or wherever you can buy it. Next up, I have two from Kieran NYC and they're both created by Matthew Nardin. This first one is called Nitro Noir. And Nitro Noir is sort of this uh, orisey root kind of combo with I think some patchouli, 
Maybe some bergamot. It smells like there's like pink pepper or something like that in here too. I really like this one. It's like got a little bit of a depth to it, which is probably why it's called Noir, Nitro Noir. <laughs> um, and then we have this one here called Sunday Brunch. And this one is back to kind of a, a light tea fragrance. It has some lemon, I think uh, maybe some bergamot jasmine in here as well. Oh, I really like that. Um, I like them both. <laughs> but uh, Anyway, uh, so those are from Kieran NYC. All right, now we're down to the last house, which is Killian. I only have three from Killian now because I used up Princess, like it's it's gone. <laughs> it was only a one ounce, but it's gone now. Uh, so let's see here. The first one up was created by the Noise Lapuza. I don't know how you say his name, but it's a fragrance you probably never heard me talk about before. This is called Angel Share. Uh, I'm just kidding, I talk about this a lot, but I, I love this fragrance. I love this and I love Amber Nargile and they smell a lot alike. So anyway, this is like supposed to be mimicking cognac in a way. And it definitely does. <laughs> it has like cinnamon, it has dried fruits, woods, vanilla. Oh my God, I love it so much. <laughs> I love this fragrance. Guys, I love it. I love it. Anyway, that's Angel Share. Uh, then we have, God, I love this one too. This is Back to Black. This was created by Khalees Becker. And this one is like this honey tobacco fragrance. It has a bit of incense and tonka and Maybe a bit of woods to it. Mm -hmm, this is sexy. Um, yeah, some people, this does have a powdery vibe to it, but I, this is not safe because I mentioned before, some people told me they think it smells like baby powder. I get the powderiness, but it doesn't smell like baby powder to me. It smells like delicious honey tobacco and tonka. <laughs> um, but the tonka, I think, makes it powdery. So anyway, that's back to black. Very sexy fragrance, in my opinion. And finally, we have this one here. This is Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. And again, this was created by Khalees Becker. This one is like the original, so it smells like Fruity Pebbles, but with rose. <laughs> so it actually smells maybe slightly less like, uh, like Fruity Pebbles. And it's a little less sweet, but the original smells like Fruity Pebbles. Um, so this one is the rose, neroli, orange blossom. I think that there's like a marshmallow thing going on, but again, that's called Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. Bottle's beautiful. Um, and I, I do prefer this to the original, even though I like the original as well. But I sold my bottle of the original a while back when I got this one because I liked it more, but they're pretty similar. All right, that's it for today's installation of my entire perfume collection. Um, I'm feeling like I probably went over 30 minutes. Oh, I know I did, but I, th I feel like it probably will be even when I edit it down. So my apologies. The last one was like probably closer to 35 minutes than 30. This one probably will be too. I'm just hoping it's not more than 35 minutes. Anyway, um, so we are about halfway through my collection. So I have two more uh, parts to the series. So make sure you stay tuned for those. I'll also be airing some like kind of shorter videos in between these um, just to have something different as well. And also because these take a while to put together. So it's, you know, nice to get out something a little faster in between. Um, but otherwise, I hope that you all are enjoying this series. If so, please do give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I'd really like to know um, what your surprise is missing because I think there are some things from these houses that are gone now that maybe you would have expected to see or what was a surprise to you? What did you not know that I had or what do you really like here that you're glad that I also have? Leave me those comments down below. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, it's free. Um, and of course, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when part three comes out for this series. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.